What is up, everybody? It is Wednesday night. I almost said it was Thursday night. It's Wednesday night, which means it's open mic night. It is your night to take over the show, your night to call in, take your five minutes, and we'll see. Maybe it's not that busy of a call in night. Maybe we'll watch the Jed York interview together and break that down because I think there was some different thoughts on some of the things that he said. Maybe I'll take a few of you and we'll do a mock draft. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But that being said, one way or another, first and foremost, it is your night if you want it to be. Otherwise, I will take it in a different direction. Hold on. There we go. We're going to figure it all out next. All right. Welcome back to Last Second Sports, where we are giving you our take down to the last second. Like I said, it's your night to call in. Link is pinned to the top of the chat. So if you want to get in, get in early. And we'll play it by ear. I know that there's not a lot going on. So it's possible there's not a lot on your minds. That's okay. We'll figure out a way to make the show go one way or another. But I do have a few people waiting backstage. We'll get through them and we'll continue to go from there. But if you want your five minutes to talk about whatever it is that's on your mind, you've got it. Click on the link, it'll bring you backstage, and I will bring you up in the order in which you are waiting. That being said, I mean, it wouldn't be an open mic night if Korean 49er didn't get us started. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to Korean 49er. What's up, Korean 49er? I'm all right, Jesse. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. Fantastic. I'll probably go back into hiding after this for a little bit, so you never know. Try okay. To right. Whatever of the spring that's supposed to be starting up here. Um, so, based on that interview of Jed York, it seems that at, with that kind of mindset and attitude, you will just be the bridesmaid every time we're in the Super Bowl. You know, with that kind of mindset. You know, it's it's interesting to me because I think a lot of people took different thoughts from that interview. I. I didn't have an issue with him showing maturity and maybe changing his answer a little bit. Where I took exception with what Jed York was saying was the simple fact that he kept seemingly, I thought, taking shots at his uncle. And I thought that was uncalled for. I took it as he was taking cheap shots at his uncle. There was multiple things that that he said. Well, you know, I mean, it would be nice if we could just spend whatever money we wanted. Uh, Didn't have a salary cap. It's like, dude, just win a Super Bowl, all right? I don't care. Win a Super Bowl. I don't know. You also have to realize, you know, his uncle's dad also won two Stanley Cups with the Pittsburgh Penguins, so in the 1990s. I mean, that part of the family is is much bigger winners than the Yorks. I met the Yorks are 0-3 in Super Bowls last time I checked, so. Yeah, they are. But, you know, and they they're. They've been smart business people. I'll give it to them. I know that you measure success in the NFL a lot of times with how much money you're making, and they're doing a fantastic job there. But we as fans, we don't care about that. We don't care that the team is valued at more. We don't care that you have more money to go buy a soccer team in BFE where I don't give a damn, right? We care that you're winning a Super Bowl, and that hasn't happened yet. So if if you're going to represent the 49ers and get up in front of everybody and answer questions brought to you by the media, which is essentially the extension of the fan base wanting to know these answers to these questions, well, then address it as such. Address the fan base knowing that the one thing we care about is winning another Lombardi trophy. That's all we care about. We don't care about any of the other stuff. The lemonade stand this, or how much money you're making, none of that. We care about winning a Super Bowl, period. 
didn't Jed say that they only put up pictures of the team that wins teams that win Super Bowls? And last time I checked, they haven't had any teams during his his ownership tenure hung up in their facility, supposedly. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, know if that's true or not, facility. but that's what he said. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that or see that. But uh yeah. That was, that was a while know. back. So he said something to that effect. I'm like, okay, you're the one who set up the expectations. So but question for you, Jesse. Yeah. With the gold standard now being the Chiefs, they're cold about making whatever decisions about making their football team better. They are. You gotta think about it. You said you don't want Tyreek Hill anymore after losing that one Super Bowl, and mm-hmm. then you beef up your offensive line and kind of mishmash it together. To me, you gotta. This team says we're gonna run it back. I'm like, okay, you're insane because last time I checked, you've done that. And how many times have you lost to this team in the Super Bowl? I mean, this franchise in the Super Bowl. You yeah, I don't know. If you, that well, I don't know if you. I don't know if you caught it, but they signed like the a star rugby player today. Oh, I, I know. The, remember when the Niners did that with Haynes? But they uh, he's twenty three years old or something. Like they're they're trying some crazy stuff. We'll see if it actually works for him. But yeah, the Chiefs. You know what's interesting about the Chiefs? If I remember things correctly, and I'd have to go back and look, I want to say that them beating the Forty Niners in the Super Bowl in twenty nineteen, they actually had more turnover on their team than the 49ers and they were the team that won, but they realized that they needed to try to continue to get better. If they wanted to keep winning super bowls, they retooled it completely after going to the super bowl and losing to the bucks. They've done a lot of major tweaks after winning super bowls and big games. They're not afraid to do that. And the 49ers this year, they've retweaked things a lot. And so we'll, we'll see how it plays out for them. But I remember after 2019, they didn't do a lot of, retooling or retweaking not to the level that the chiefs did anyways i agree with that i definitely agree with that because it seems that they're willing to make the hard decisions on which way to go for their team and say hey you know someone asked me you know living in the midwest when the bulls were winning all the championships and said you know everyone kept saying we hate the bulls because like we got because we got jordan it's like i understood what it's like you know now when you know, everyone's speaking up the Chiefs and like that kind of drives a, you know, the proverbial stake in the, a hot stake in the heart. You know? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to, I want to hear it. Don't even want to, it was like, I had buddies at work that asked me, it's like, what do you think about the Super Bowl? I'm like, I got no comment, man. No comment, just walked away. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to get angry at someone. I'm like, it's out of my control, man. What can I do about it? So. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Well, yep. One last question for you, Jesse. Yeah. In my life, I'm already resigned to the Bulls. I'm a Bulls fan. I'm already resigned to the fact that they'll never win another championship in my lifetime. I mean, you're a a Trailblazers fan, and I feel your pain. So I can understand and feel your pain. So, you know, about not being able to, you know, go across that finish line, per se. At least you got something from your basketball team. (laughs) I'm not not going to... You know, cry or complain about those days. I was a senior in high school when they won that last championship in '97. So I just mm. graduated right after they, right before they won that last championship, and we all know what happened after. So, yeah, yeah, but, man, still- I don't know. I don't know that the Bulls are <laughs> the Bulls. Bulls are struggling, man. They are on a struggle bus, and the Blazers. <laughs> the interesting thing about the Blazers, they're always seems like they're always getting good to make the playoffs for these runs. And then they go into these massive rebuilds, like these rehauls every 10 years or so and bring in new stars and you get excited. And then it's never enough. And it's just the same thing over and over and over. As they say, if, if rebuilds were guaranteed, go ask the Chicago Cubs about rebuilding. They did 108 years of that before they finally won a championship. I don't want this franchise, the 49ers to go through, well, it's approaching 30 years, so just saying. I mean, rebuilds are yeah. never guaranteed. So, all right. Thank you, Jesse. All right, brother. Hey, if you if you are, in fact, going into a hiatus, it was good talking to you, and we'll talk soon. Yeah, no problem. 
All right, Thanks, brother. Sir. Later. There we go. There's Korean 49er. I had two more waiting backstage. They dropped. So if you want to call in, I think TC said he wanted to call in. I would say now's the time. Now would be the time to do so. I'm looking something up real quick, though. Real quick. Uh, let's see. All right. There we go. I decided to fix something real quick. Apologize about that. All right. Let's get to some of these starred comments. Dave says, Jesse, how are you doing today, sir? Doing good, man. Doing really good. Thank you. Mitchell and Ness says, why no show with Grant? Grant is traveling. He was in Orlando for the team, or excuse me, the owners meetings. And then he is traveling back home. So he and I aren't doing a show tonight. We might do one tomorrow. We'll see if we can make it work. Daniel says, dope shirt, favorite BJ Penn fight. That Ken Flo beatdown was pretty nice. So funny thing about that, that K Flo beatdown, he, uh, I was actually in Hawaii on my honeymoon for that fight. That was July or August 2009, if I remember correctly. And yeah, that was a hell of a performance. My favorite fight, it probably was the, the Matt Hughes fight, man. Beating Matt Hughes was so unexpected. The thing I love about BJ Penn, my, all of my favorite fighters, they all have the same thing in common. They all legitimately will fight anybody at any weight class anywhere. They're like fighters, fighters. Like I was never a big Georgia St. Pierre fan because he always played it safe. I felt like he did. He always stayed at 170 and didn't move up. Now he ended up coming back and beating Bisbing or whatever. but. He played it safe. Anderson Silva didn't play it safe. He was bouncing around in weight classes. BJ Penn, Randy Couture, Connor McGregor, the Diaz brothers. Like these guys are fighters, fighters. Jorge Masvidal, those are my types of fighters. But yeah, there's a lot of great. I mean, shoot, BJ Penn went up to 205 pounds in Japan and fought Lyoto Machida and arguably won that fight. It's crazy. The 49ers says, I was thinking that we can either we can either trade Ayuk for Satan, uh, Sertan. We can trade Ayuk for first this year, use that first round, and we get uh we get from the team and get Patrick Sertan. I think it's gonna take more than a first, and I think it would take more than Ayuk, personally. I would love I mean I I don't I don't want to say I would love it because I do like Ayuk. He's probably my favorite Niner right now, but man. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. All right, I got Niner Gang and then Jason. So we'll go to Niner Gang here, see what he's talking about tonight. What's up, Niner Gang? What's going on, Jess? How are we doing today? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Oh, man, just out here trying to corral these dogs and chickens, man. You know, get them back in their cages. <laughs> dogs and chickens? What yeah, in the world? Out outside, my chickens out and about in the coop. Little chicken coop. <laughs> nice, nice. That's dope. I like it. No, man, just uh, talk about these Niners a little bit in their little offseason tobacco we seem to be in, apparently. Yeah. I'm going with the same O-line that we played in the Super Bowl with, which, whatever, I guess. But um, my question is, is, is these defenses see where our weaknesses are off of this line? They've had a whole year of film study now to truly dissect that offensive line. And we can all agree the right side is weak and the left side didn't look that good in the Super Bowl. So this just seems like a recipe for disaster if they don't. And mind you, this could all go away if they do something crazy on draft night, right? Move up in the draft, get a plug and play player to McKivitz is good. He'd be a great rotational player, I do believe. But man, for sure, just giving them all the reps, it. And this is no knock on him, you know, it's just, it's just what it is. So. Well, he's just maxed out, right? I mean, you, you look at the offensive line and where the capital has been spent. Trent Williams, first round player. Now the 49ers obviously didn't spend a first, but he was drafted in the first round. He's the best offensive lineman we have. That makes sense. Then you have right next to him, Aaron Banks, who was drafted in the second round. He's the second best offensive lineman we have. 
And then when you go center over, it's a bunch of guys that were either late round picks or, you know, uh, undrafted guy, what have you. So you've got a, the three guys that you should probably be looking to upgrade weren't blue chip prospects. They weren't blue chip draft picks. It doesn't mean that they're bad or they're not. They're, I mean, they're all playing up to expectation based off of what they are, probably even above expectation if we're being real. But that doesn't mean that they're good enough to win. Exactly, bro. Cole McKivitz, in all honesty, I was impressed with him this last year. I really, really was. I was truly impressed with him. Um, he did good, but at the same time, he's not great. And unfortunately, you need that. And, and I just feel for Brock Purdy that he has tendencies like everybody does. And he's limited as far as what his arm talent is. So it's kind of easy to figure out what he's going to do in the pocket. And defenses can control that. They can force that pocket one way and force him to go a certain type of way. And it's going to take one good collision, man. And it's going to be a bad day for the Niners. Bad season, you know. And I just hope that's not the case, man. I hope Brock stays slippery enough to where they can't get him. Because I really believe that Brock helped that O-line maintain some of the stats that they that they occurred throughout the season i really really truly believe that so, no i i agree with that and and people you know last night i think it was last night i was doing a show and people were like well they were seventh in the league and sacks given up they're not that bad of an alliance like well okay first of all let's look at the right tackle he was number three in the league in sacks given up i think mckivitz yeah. so that's not good it, <laughs> that's not good at all and then, yeah, the the overall line, but a lot of that is really Brock Purdy protecting himself, getting rid of the ball quick. We talk about his strengths. You know, his strengths, he's not this physical monster, but mentally, he's very sharp. He gets the ball out quick. He makes the right decisions. He knows what the offense, what is expected of him in this offense. And I think that all of that helps bail out this offensive line from time to time. So, you know, it... Sacks are not always a offensive line thing, good or bad. It's just not. Sometimes it's on the quarterback. Sometimes the quarterback can save you from getting sacks that should have been sacks, and sometimes the quarterback will walk into sacks that shouldn't have been sacks. So, yep. And to that point, dude, that's exactly why I'm kind of on the fence of don't pay IU crazy money because he's a great route runner and stuff, but you got to have time for these routes to develop. And we've seen game after game after game, even if the routes develop, he's number four on the depth chart, number five on the depth chart. You know, Kyle Shanahan doesn't scheme to have the take off the top. That's not his scheme. That's not his game plan. His game plan is throw everything to Christian and Debo and see what happens out of the backfield, you know? So, but with that being said, my last thing, man, I'm going to let you go is Brock Purdy, Jed York. Oh, I'm ready to pay him 40 million. Let's say two hypotheticals. Bright Brock has the same exact season that he had last year, stat wise. Do you pay him? Do do I pay him? Not you, but does do you think that the organization should pay him if he produces the same way he produced this last season? Even if he makes it to the Super Bowl or not, let's say we go to NFC championship game. And just like with the Super Bowl, we all agree the loss wasn't on him. But yeah, not at all. It wasn't on him. No. But at the same time. He didn't pull a, you know, he didn't get into his bag to take the game over and control it, right? As as Mahomes. Yeah. So yeah, that said, the, the thought the thought process is is that maybe he'll grow into that, right? Maybe that'll be something he does do in the future, right? We're still talking about a, a player who's only started one year in this league, so I think that's where their thought process is. One hundred percent, they're going to pay him. It doesn't matter what what our opinions are. They're they're going to pay Brock if he can stay healthy this year and he can play at a level. Anywhere close to what he did last year, he's going to get the bag. Now the question becomes, what does it look like once you start stripping players away? I mean, it's very small sample size, but Trent Williams, Debo Samuel, when they were out of the lineup, we saw how it got a little squirrely. And if you look at what he's probably going to get paid, that's roughly those two salaries wiped off the team. So not necessarily those players, right? You move money around, it's different. but essentially. Uh, imagine removing talent at that level away from this roster. Well, if you weren't going to win with that talent, what makes you think that they're going to win without that talent? Is Brock going to improve so much that he can overcome talent like that to go win a Super Bowl? I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. So, hey, and on that note, Jess, 
And that's why I'm with you, my guy. Three-year rule, buddy. I don't judge him until I see him for three years. <laughs> Have a good night, Jess. You too, man. Later. Yeah. The the IU thing, I see I see where he was coming from on the IU thing. For me, though, IU now may be option three or four. But I gotta look two, three years down the line. Two, three years down the line, that's not gonna be the case. And that's why I would pay IU. Because when I look at this team as currently constructed, assuming you're going to pay Brock Purdy and he's going to be your guy for the next 10 years, well, I want him, I want him to have good weapons around him in three years. I don't want them to... Because think about it like this. If they got rid of Ayuk today, let's say they traded him in this draft. And then the player that they draft to replace him doesn't pan out. Okay, worst case scenario. They draft a wide receiver. He doesn't pan out. Now you're four years down the line. The receiver you drafted to replace IU didn't pan out. Debo's gone. CMC's gone. Kittle's gone. Trent's gone. You are trying to replace a lot of guys. And that's going to be hard to do when your quarterback's getting paid a lot of money because you can't just go sign all these free agents to make up for it. You may be able to sign one or two, but you would have had to have hit in the draft this year and next year. IU being on this team ensures that he has a weapon that he's grown with, that he trusts, who's still going to be in his prime in two, three years to work with, no matter what. That's a guarantee. Now, the rest of it is not a guarantee, but at least I'm guaranteeing one really good weapon for him as his career develops, as he's getting paid, and trying to fill out the roster around that. If I strip Ayuk away from that, I have zero guarantees that in three years he's got anything worth a damn around him. So that's why I would personally play or pay Ayuk. All right, we're going to go to Jason and then Alan. What's up, Jason? Hey, what's going on, Jesse? Not much. How you doing? Not too bad. I got a kind of an odd question that's been bugging me for about two years now at this point. Okay. I don't understand right. the valuation on BA. Uh, last okay. year, there was a lot of rumors that he might get traded for. I think it was 22 or 23 overall to the Giants. Okay. This year, I'm hearing like maybe 20. I don't understand why he's rated so far back when you know what you have with him. You know he's going to mm. push. He's going to show up to training camp in top condition, ready for the playoffs. He's going to show out. He's going to challenge the defense. He's going to make the defense improve. He's not a diva. He's not. He's everything you want in a player. He's going to block for you. He's going to do everything. And then you got rookies that might be the next Justin Jefferson or might be the next Jalen Rager. So it's like, how is he rated so far back in the draft when you know what you have with him versus you don't know what you have with any of these other guys? Well, a, a lot of it is getting paid, right? When you draft those other guys, you're getting them at an inexpensive rate versus Ayuk, you've got to pay big time money. I mean, we saw it with Legereus Need, where Legereus Sneed just got traded for a future third, which is equivalent to a fourth round pick in, pick in this upcoming draft. And he is one, arguably the best corner in the NFL right now, but he's 27 and you have to pay him a ton of money. It's, that's just the going rate. I mean, a, a wide receiver. Now, that's, that's the argument for it, though, Jason, as to why you probably sh shouldn't trade IU because there is no guarantee. You might end up with a receiver like you were talking about. There's no guarantee that Mitchell or whoever you end up drafting is going to be at that caliber. Now, you may get lucky and hit where maybe he's maybe the player you draft is better than IU. That's a possibility. And if he is, that's a big win because you've got them on a very inexpensive contract. But that is a really, you're taking a roll of the dice and you don't know what's going to come up. You might hit snake eyes. You have no idea. That's what makes this tough. But if they were to trade him, you look at the receivers that have been traded over the last few years, whether that's Devontae Adams, whether that's Tyree Kill. We know what the Jets essentially offered for Debo, A.J. Brown. It's right in that range. So that's basically what he would go for, is somewhere right in that range, middle to late first round. All right. I had one other thought for you. Uh, I watched your show with Coach with the mock draft of the B.A. trade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what about trading 20 and 31 to, say, the Bears for pick nine? Oh, Bears get two more first-round picks. Like, I, I wouldn't be the, mad at that. 
going by the trade chart, that's actually in the Bears' favor by 100 points. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's no, that's definitely a possibility. I wouldn't necessarily be mad at that. It depends on the player that you're getting. I, I think what we were kind of looking at was, okay, well, we can re- hopefully replace BA, but also get our future left tackle. You're kind of taking two shots there. But man, if you could get into the top 10 and get a bona fide superstar, that would be hard to pass up too. That's actually really good. I didn't I didn't think of that that night. That would actually be a really good trade. I'd almost be interested in mocking that one now. I was looking at it like Chicago could use the picks. It's mm-hmm. still using two more first round picks and gives the Niners yeah. their in theory their left tackle or most likely, you know, an extra kicker or something will draft. Something yeah. way out of left yeah. field that we don't need, but <laughs> Man, yeah, Rome. Rome would be a good one. Uh, neighbors would be the one, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think he'd fall that far. Yeah, I don't know, man. That'd be crazy. I actually kind of want to mock that now. Like, all right, who who could you get at number nine? Who's going to fall? What do you do? That'd be interesting. There's going to be three or four quarterbacks off the board, like a couple receivers. We might get a top two tackle or end or ta- defensive tackle. Like there's a, there's a lot. There. Yeah, the, dude, the number nine's a whole different world, man. Uh, the, I forget his name, but the tight end up there, like that yeah, Bowers. Too. Yeah, yeah, that would be it. That would get interesting. Okay, now you got me thinking. Maybe we should have made that trade to see what happens. <laughs> but that's all I got, man. I just want to say I appreciate it. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate you. Have a good night, man. All right, you too. Later. Interesting. Where, where, where are you guys seeing this stuff? Hackers saying they will trade Watson in a third or a fourth for Brandon. Listen, you give me Watson in a second, and we'll give you Ayuk in a third. I'd listen to that, actually. Watson's a... His problem has been health, though, and I don't know how how I feel about that, but talent-wise, through the roof. He's got a lot of talent. And what is this? Herbert being traded to the Patriots? Jim Harbaugh? You know what's crazy about this? I don't I don't know if there's any truth to this or where you're reading this, but if you walk through it, just because his guy is in the draft, you, you could actually see a scenario where Crazy Harbaugh would do something like this. Absolutely do something like this. So, I don't know. That would be interesting. Because he would just go get J.J. McCarthy, who you know he believes in, and then rack up not only the first round pick ne- this year, but two more first round picks probably. And then just go fill out the team. So I could actually see Harbaugh doing some crazy stuff like that. But either way. All right, Alan and then Daniel. What's up, Alan? Hey, Jesse. How you doing? Doing good, man. How are you? Doing good. I'm on break for once. When you're on your there show. you go. It's kind of good. You got- <laughs> yeah, for sure. I know, for sure. I, I know. I know it kind of sucks having that background noise, but. How you doing, man? I've been good, man. Been really good. Good to hear from you. It's good to hear from you too, man. Um, more I look back, and I, I know you can agree on this because you talked about this uh, a while back. Now, if we, like you said, if we knew we had McCaffrey that one year when Debo asked for that trade, I wish we would have done the trade for Debo. Oh, hindsight's twenty twenty on that. They, I fully believe that they would have traded Debo for whatever pick it was they were being offered for, that year. It was for that uh, what, Garrett Wilson. By the Jets. I think so. Something like that. Yeah. And imagine Gary Wilson with BA would have been a nasty little duo. And then he would have had that rookie contract receiver with uh, BA getting his contract right, right now, you know? Yeah. Yep. Um, but I wanted to get your opinion on this little theory. I know you're saying, in your own opinion so far, like what you've seen with Brock, he's not a franchise quarterback. What if the Niners didn't want to pay a quarterback yet and traded him next year and drafted a quarterback this year to develop? Uh, I mean, that's always a possibility. You know, that's not a possibility from the standpoint they're going to do that. It's always something you could do. What I would What I would do is if I wasn't sure on Brock, I would just say, hey, you know what? I want to see it. I want to see it without some weapons around you type of thing. You know, I want to see it play out. So what I would do is 
You're for sure going to have Brock. Offensive line, like Kyle said. Upgrade the <laughs> offensive line. <laughs> right, right. You, the thing is, is that you technically have him minimum four more years if you want him for four more years. You've got him on the rookie deal this year, rookie deal next year, franchise tag, franchise tag. I mean, really, you could you could play it out long term without with for four years without actually giving him a long term deal at fifty million plus a year. You could you could do that. Now the 49ers are not going to do that. I'm confident in that. But you could drag this thing out if you really wanted to. I'm just. I think you can agree. I don't want. I don't think Brock is a Jimmy. But paying He's him Jimmy, Jimmy money. If you pay him Jimmy's money though, where you lose weapons and stuff, that's where it's a little toss up and stuff. I know losing weapons, like you said, Trent Williams and Debo throughout those weeks was looking not that so good for Brock. Yeah. Now, uh, to be fair, it is a small sample size. Like, I, I want to look at this from all angles, right? I, I know yeah. that I'm like the resident Brock Purdy hater, but, uh, and this is off brand. Well, so plug- realistically, though, you're just, <laughs> you know, spinning facts. <laughs> Listen, but, but plug your ears so that you can continue to label me as a hater. But I want to look at this from both sides and say it's small sample size, very small sample size. Also, even if that is what he is now, that doesn't mean that that's what he is in two years, right? Because this I is agree. this next season is his first full off season. You would expect to see some improvements. Yes, there's only so high he can go because there's physical limitations. I get that, but there's a lot of little things in his game that really that he good. can improve on. He can really improve in a lot of little areas, and I expect that he does do that. And what's going to be interesting is. I could see a scenario where his numbers might not even be as good this next year, but I'm watching him play and say, oh, he's a better quarterback. He's better than he was last year. Now, numbers may not play out that way, but you could really see that scenario where it's like, hey, we're looking at a better player this year. I don't care what the numbers say. This kid's better. That's also a possibility. Yeah, yeah, I agree because what you would call it, Mahomes didn't have a great statistical you know, season. Everybody thought that was a down right. season, but if you go for an eye test, you know, he still ha- does what he does highly, but just less weapons. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, um, no. last question. Um, I'm going to talk, let's talk a little bit more NFL, you know, cause I know you like talking about the NFL mm-hmm. in general. Um, do you see, the Jets making a run this year? Because I know now everybody's starting to get onto the hype train with the Jets again, like usual, like last year. Do you believe in that hype train? I, I don't. I really don't. They've <laughs> they put, they've got so much capital. And listen, long term, they're not hurt because these guys are on one year deals, but they've got they're so just much so invested old. They're so on old. Yes, older players with injury history. If those guys go down, their their season shot. No, I, I I don't, and I don't know what Aaron Rodgers is going to look like. No idea what he's going to look like. I, I don't. President. Yeah, exactly. I don't <laughs> buy it. I really don't buy the Jets. That's the more we'll the more that. I see that Jets news, the more I'm kind of glad we didn't get Aaron Rodgers. Because think about, well, for you guys, it probably been wonderful. Because you know, there's more stuff to talk about. But well, he wouldn't have been injured though. To be fair, he. Things play out differently, right? You've got to assume that he doesn't get injured if he's here. Just, I mean, you he's not so? playing on I, that I turf. Mean, yeah. it, it was turf, though, regardless. I, it I it was know, the turf know. monster at MetLife, but also everything's different. Everything is different. If the Jets call, this is how different it is. If the Jets snap the ball one second later, that probably doesn't happen. If the Jets call a different play there, that probably doesn't happen. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many little things that could change that. So if he's in a whole different team, you've got to imagine it's likely he doesn't go down with an Achilles tear, which means who knows what that looks like. I agree. And I see my five minutes is up, Jesse. I appreciate your time. And thanks for <laughs> Absolutely. All right, brother. You have a good one. You too, man. Later. All right, we're going to go to uh, Daniel and then TC in just a minute. But let me get to these things that I starred real quick. Uh, Guillermo says, last second sports, do you think Drake Jackson gets an opportunity to play more? I don't know, man. You know what's weird is nobody asked about Drake Jackson. Nobody's at, it's all. I think everybody kind of forgot about Drake Jackson. I know I did until you just brought it up. 
I don't know. I mean, a lot of raw talent. Year one, his body wasn't ready for an NFL season. Year two, his body wasn't ready for an NFL season. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with Drake Jackson, but he's going into year three. And I think a lot of us kind of forgot about him. Everyone's worst nightmare is what specifically can he improve on? I assume you're talking about Brock here. Yeah, man. I, first of all, listen, a lot of people talk about Drew Brees when they talk about Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy is not as accurate as people think he is. He's just not. People look at completion percentage, but when you look at ball placement, throw after throw after throw, there's there's a lot of improvement that can happen there. I mean, I'd say, like if you look at CJ Stroud, for example, that dude, completion percentage wise, you're like, oh, there, he's not as accurate as Brock. No, no, no. You watch him in college and then you watch him last year throw into those tight windows repeatedly and put the ball right on the money in a place that only his receiver could get it. There's there's something to that. Brock Purdy can be a lot more accurate. I would say he's, I don't know, lower middle of the league as far as pure accuracy goes. So there's a place that he can improve. I also think he can improve his decision making. I, I think he was very erratic in college. We haven't seen a lot of that in the NFL. And people, I know people hate talking about should be turnovers. Every quarterback has dropped interceptions. I got that. But you know that there's a stat that tracks how often it happens for every player. It's not just a Brock Purdy thing. But when you look at that percentage, it's extremely high. He puts the ball in harm's way a lot. Now, that can go in his favor, too, in a sense that if Brock Purdy throws a ball, or a, any quarterback, throws the ball to a receiver, and the receiver drops it, and it pops up in the air and gets intercepted, that doesn't go towards your turnover-worthy plays because that's not on the quarterback. That's why I like that stat so much because it's not just as simple as, oh, dropped interceptions. No, 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 no. Sometimes interceptions happen that are not at all on the quarterback. And that stat tracks all of it. So I look at that stat a lot. I love that stat because it tells you how much your quarterback or how often your quarterback is putting the ball in harm's way. He needs to clean that up. He does. He's been very lucky in a lot of scenarios with that. So I would say decision making and accuracy are the two biggest areas of improvement. And I think that he's going to improve on both of those this offseason. I really do. And that's what I'm saying. There's there's a scenario where Brock Purdy's stats are not as good as last year, and he's a better player. All right, I'm going to go to uh, Daniel and then TC. What's up, Daniel? Oh, uh, Jesse, how's it going, man? Good, man. How are you? I was just having a good night here watching you, and then I have a bone to pick, so I had to call in. Let's do it. I love it. I can do it. Um, I can't stand for the I can't stand for the GSP slander. First okay. and foremost, <laughs> <laughs> that is not where I thought you were gonna go. But I'm sorry, I was mid drink, dude. That is not where I thought that was gonna go. That's awesome. Uh, no, I uh. You have me. I was like, yeah, this is great. Like, yeah, I agree. The Diaz brothers, Anderson Silva. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Like, ah, and then GSP never really challenged himself. I was like, oh, okay. All right. This is where I draw my line with Jesse. Um, oh, no. <laughs> no, let's get back. Um, I guess, yeah, that's the reason that what made me call in. Um, but I guess, ah, oh, shoot. My, I guess let's get to the 49ers. I guess like we yeah. go on a tangent with the UFC, but we save that for another day. Um, I was just thinking right now as I was on hold. Since you're in Jacksonville, I'm a. I was born in Tampa. Raised, I'm in Tampa. Oh, Tampa. 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 Sorry, sorry. Yeah. My next point is to get about Jacksonville. So sorry mm -hmm. about that, but yes, uh, Florida. Um, I'm born and raised in the Bay Area. Been to games, Candlestick and Levi's, and now living in Vegas. I've gone to you know games on the West Coast. 49er fan go to Rams games here and there. But this year, my wife and I decided to go to the Jacksonville game. And okay. I, you, I know you didn't go to that game in particular, but being an East Coast fan, I'm assuming over the years you've been to more games or to some games on the Eastern time. Yeah, I went, to, I went to Jacksonville a couple of years ago, yeah. 
so my question for you, and it was just an observation I had when we were in Jacksonville, was are the East Coast 49er fans more rowdy? Oh, so man. At, at the Jacksonville game, I was like, this is the closest to Philadelphia fans I've ever seen with the 49ers. It was, it was like we were just – everyone was tearing into Jacksonville fans. I was like, I've never seen this at Levi's. Maybe back in the day at Candlestick when the team was like 3-13 and 13 and people were, you know, boozing before games and get a little ratty at Candlestick. But I'm like, over the past decade at Levi's, I'm like, I've never seen even anything remotely close to – like the rowdiness of the fans in Jacksonville. Like it was fun. It was like, oh, this is different from the, you know, the the first down chance and you know, the more quiet, respectful Levi's crowd. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. First of all, I don't know how many of those fans are traveling from the West Coast. So I don't want to say that. But what one thing I will say is I went to my first home game this year. I'm I'm used to traveling to other stadiums. That's how I take in the 49ers, right? Yeah. So this was my first time going to a 49ers home game. I was there for the Tampa Bay game, and then I was there. That was Thanksgiving week, and then I was there for the NFC Championship. Right. I like road games better. Yes. I don't I don't know where these fans are coming from, so I don't want to say East Coast fans are rowdier or what have you, but what I will say is there's something to knowing that you are the minority and everybody banding together having each other's back, back against the wall mentality, knowing that you have to not physically fight, but fight for your voice to be heard in somebody else's stadium. You know what I mean? So right. to me, there's something to that and that feeling that brings everybody together in a way that maybe home games don't necessarily. I do personally enjoy road games more than I do home games at Levi Stadium. I do. Right. I did the opposite of you this year. Like, I'm so used to just going to home games where mm -hmm. this year I was like, we're just going to go to road games. So we went to the Rams game in L.A. And so far, it's such a dope experience. So, but between, the, and, you know, Jacksonville, that game, and then we went to the Cardinals game in Arizona. The, you know, you really don't feel like you're in the minority at those games because, like, the Some fans, we, we outnumber the... Like, I'm sure when you were in Pittsburgh, it was, you know, primarily a Pittsburgh fan base. But some of these other stadiums, it's like, it was just interesting to see the uh, dichotomy in the difference of the, not necessarily the fan base, but like, yeah, a road a road atmosphere versus a home atmosphere. Um, yeah, I really didn't have much to talk about because, like I said, I was calling in about your GST. <laughs> and that was so not, funny. Why, why it threw me way like, off. Why do you not like GSP, Jesse? It's not that I don't like GSP. I just wouldn't put them in my favorites. I, I don't, I really, you know, what's interesting is every since this and, and a lot of people going back to football, get mad at, at me because I'll post about mainly on Twitter, not really so much here, but mainly on Twitter where I'll talk about other players from other teams and how much I like watching them and enjoy their game. And a lot of that is because growing up as a Blazer fan, I hated Michael Jordan. Absolutely could not stand him. Right. Looking back on his career and obviously how great he was, I really feel like I missed out on the true enjoyment of just how great he was because I spent my time disliking him. So even when Kobe was around with LA and Shaq and what have you, as much as I couldn't stand the Lakers, I really took in their career knowing that I was watching greatness Right. So that's the way that I, I try to look at it is even if it's a rival team or or something like that, I truly try to take in the greatness that I'm watching and enjoy it for what it is. So GSP, I know he's one of the all time greats, arguably the best of all time. I understand all of that. I personally, though, if he was fighting a guy like BJ Penn or if he had fought Anderson Silva, I would have rooted for those guys because they were willing to take risks that I think. BJ Penn, Khabib's another one, one of the all-time greats, just weren't willing to take risks in moving up in weight classes for whatever reason. Maybe the money wasn't right. Maybe they didn't want to abandon it. I don't, I don't know, but I would have liked to have seen them take risks and put on big fights in higher weight classes. I think that would have been fun. 
Yeah, I think the missed opportunity was getting GSP and Anderson Silva there in about yeah, That was the one. Yeah, that was the one that got away. I just, I, you know, Anderson was so great with just, you know, these flash knockouts, whether it was a front kick to Vitor <sighs> sleeping Dude. forward. But, like, when, like, my thing with GSP was he was, like, the first person that I was, like, he could literally dominate you wherever he wants to. Where, you know, mm-hmm. some of these other fighters is like, okay, I can't stand with Anderson, so I might try to wrestle him. Or they'll try to, you know, everyone had a weakness somewhere for the most part. I felt like GSP was one of the very first where he was truly well-rounded everywhere. And so he was. It was, um, yeah, I think that was the biggest missed opportunity we had, though. And then it was like, you know, then all these years later, like, oh, Khabib and GSP is like, oh, really don't want that either anymore. Like, GSP is on the wrong Too side. Old. Too yeah, old. Exactly. But anyways, yeah, it's too Jesse. late. I'm sorry. I'm happy you didn't choke on your water. But, yeah, uh, yeah, dude. I, it really <laughs> threw me off, man. I did not expect that to be where I was because I was just talking about the Brock thing. I'm like, okay, he's gonna take exception with the Brock. No, I got an exception with the GSP take. That was really funny, man. That was great. Thank uh, you, Daniel. I appreciate right. it. Yeah, have a good one. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> Later. <laughs> that one definitely threw me for a loop. That was super funny. Okay, I got a couple comments here. Uh, CJ was awful in his last playoff game. Uh, I mean, on the road against Baltimore, the best defense in the league last year, what are you going to do? And and actually, if you watch that game, you, you're big on watch the film guy, 187. Go watch that film. Look at how his receivers weren't doing him any favors whatsoever. There was drops and big moments that killed drives. They couldn't run the ball worth a lick. There was a lot that went uh, against him. But listen, if if the point here is to devalue what CJ Stroud is, let's switch him and Brock Purdy and see how that goes. Like, Is your point that you think Brock, you would rather have Brock Purdy over CJ Stroud? Is that is that your point, or are you just saying it to say it? Because there's not a world that I would take Brock Purdy over CJ Stroud. Everyone's worst nightmare is if it says if you Google Brock Purdy accuracy, he was number one in deep passes and ten in true completion. Okay, I watch the games. I, I don't know what true completion is, but is deep accuracy just simply completion percentage you remember in 2019 when Jim, the the stat that they put up of jimmy garoppolo was and i'm not comparing him to jimmy i'm just saying we know what jimmy was but he was the number one deep ball thrower in the league like oh wow that sounds amazing on its face and then you go look at it and he had like 33 deep ball attempts and then patrick mahomes completed more than Jimmy Garoppolo attempted and attempted like twice the amount. It's like, well, yeah, of course. When you're throwing it deep the least amount in the league and you've completed it a high percentage, but listen, I I don't know. I'm just telling you what I see and what I talk about week after week with friends that also watch. So I I don't know. He's not hor- he's not terrible. I'm not saying he's like extremely inaccurate but he's not the most accurate quarterback he's not as accurate as his as his completion percentage would tell you i'll say that all right we'll go to tc what's up tc jesse what's up bro it's been a minute dog it's been a while how you been what's up bro i've been all right how you been bro just tapping in with the homie yeah yeah it's been a minute it's been a minute um, you know, we can, we can jump into it. I got, I got a few things I want to get off. Um, so for one, I don't know. Honestly, I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't trade IU for certain. I know it might sound crazy to certain people, but I'm trying to push Debo for certain, if anything. And if they're not trying to do that, then I'm just keeping on you, bro, because I'm not giving up a number one receiver. Like I said, we go back. You, listen, you know how I feel. I know how you, Grant, Ryan, everybody feels a certain way about the, you know, receivers. But, you know, to cut it dry, I use a better receiver than Debo. You know what I'm saying? But we don't want to keep beating up on Debo. Debo's a gadget guy, 
And if it's up to me, I'm keeping Ayuk and I'm getting rid of Debo. A lot of people, oh, you don't want to. I'm doing it, bro. And But I'm not trading Ayuk for Sertan. You get me? Yeah, I I, I understand. I, not that I, I wouldn't necessarily do it either. But I feel like Sertan's value circulating around the league is higher than Ayuk's. Like, if you were to just shop them both and take the highest sure. bidder, no matter what, I think Sertan would bring back more than what Ayuk does, if that makes sense. I'm not saying I would necessarily make that trade. I love Brandon Ayuk. But, man, I don't know. Patrick Sertan's value is a little, <laughs> probably a little higher. Hey, you know what, Jesse? I get you, bro. And you know what? I'm stuck in the middle on that one. That's just how I feel. As far as the Brock, you know, the conversation you had on Brock and Stroud, it wasn't really one, but I'm I'm gonna make it one. I'm taking CJ all day over Brock. You know, and that's not just because I'm trying to, you know, poo poo on Brock and you know, you know how I feel about the whole Brock situation, man. But I'm not gonna talk down about him. I want him to get his money. You get what I'm saying? If you oh, if the coach and everybody he, he deserves it. Yeah, he deserves it. He yeah. does. Period. Like if you and everybody's, you know, that was a talk, I guess, the last couple of days. Everybody's like, is Brock 40 million this and that? And this is from a lot of people that like Brock. And I'm like, if your coach is running around talking about the real deal and all that, I'm not giving anybody a pass. Just like BA, bro. I'm de- give me my money, man. Give me my money, man. We playing, we ain't winning nothing. We keep getting to the dance. Kyle, you keep on the penny pitch and play with everybody, bro, and not get out the way. You keep losing, and you the reason why we keep losing in these big games, but you want everybody to take these pennies, and if ain't nobody listening to you, they got to be in a doghouse and all that. Man, bro, I'm not giving nobody no deal. York, uh, uh, what's the boy, Parag, Lynch, Kyle, I'm not, bro, give me my money, big dog. That's how I am with the, with the team. Like, if, if you up for a contract, bro, with this minor team, I'm a diehard, Jesse. But I'm not playing no games with these guys, man. And we acting like we won all these rings and all that. It sound like I'm venting, bro, but I'm just being honest. You get me? Like, pay me, man. I'm not giving no discounts. I know you want to be for the team and the Niners. That's all fine and dandy. But how Kyle's been handling this whole situation, Lynch and Parag, low-balling people. And on top of that, we haven't won anything. We keep getting to this dance, bro, and losing. Man, I'm not taking a discount. Am I wrong for that, Jesse? No. Listen, <laughs> Brock Purdy's not going to do I saw somebody post today on Twitter. was like, you know, oh. Brock Purdy is just, he seems so nice and wholesome in his faith and I'm like, yeah, I agree. Yep, agree, agree. Yep, seems like a great guy. Uh huh, uh huh. What's the point? And I just think that he's going to be different than everybody else and he'll take less money. I'm like, what? This guy's been getting criminally underpaid the whole time he's been here. You think he's going to not take, oh, hey, I'm worth $60 million, but I'll, ta- I'll take 40 because I want to help you. Hell no. 0% chance that that happens. Now, what he might do is do what all the other quarterbacks do when they get paid, which is take, kick some money back, kick the can down the road, do some restructures to free up money for that year. But he's not going to take this major discount to a P for what? Why would he? Absolutely not. No, it's not going to happen. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing that. And as far as the draft, as far as the draft comes, uh, Go best player available. If it's not, if you're not getting an offensive tackle, period, period. In, in, in my opinion, the first two picks should be offensive tackle. This is Kyle. You keep playing around. You want to run a ball. You're supposed to be this genius, bro. But you never put chips in an offensive line. And you want to patch everybody up. I, hey, listen. I heard what Coach said. I heard how everybody, uh, Ryan. I know how people feel about the offensive line. Like this is what it's gonna be. Well, that's how it's gonna be. We're going to keep losing, either in the NFC Championship game or going to the Super Bowl and losing until we touch that offensive line. If you're not doing offensive line, I'm cool with taking best player available, but you got to do that. I'm not trying to trade back. I'm not trying to trade out. I'm not trying to draft some running back. I'm not. <laughs> Jesse, <laughs> I know it's all season, but I'm tripping, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they have to take BPA. I, and I think I... I have a feeling that's what they're going to do. I, I really do. And that's what could land them in a situation where they don't take an offensive lineman because maybe that's not the best player available. But, you know, we might be frustrated because we're sitting here going, okay, well, they didn't take an offensive lineman. Like, what's going on? Are they ever going to take an offensive lineman? Like, I don't know, man. There's, uh, there's, 
there's a lot of different directions that they can go. I could see a scenario where they trade back mm -hmm. a few spots too. Like there's not a guy that they love and they trade back a few spots and get more picks. Like I'm open to anything. I'm open to trading up. Sure. I'm open to trading back. I'm open to taking any position if it's the best guy available. But man, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. I hope they just don't look, fall in love with a position that we right. don't want and just take that guy. Like you said, that would be awful. That would be awful. Two things for our get off though. I know, I know you got other callers. Um, so are you drafting a quarterback? Just yes or no? Mm, probably not, to be honest. No, I don't think so. So you run it with, uh, what's the boy we just picked up from that was on 30 team? The boy Dobbs. The, and, past, the and past or not? The pa the best, yeah. the best name in football, the past or not? Uh, yeah, I'm probably running with the past or not as my number two. <laughs> yeah, Dobbs. I, you know what? I got to disagree with you on that one, Jesse. I think okay. I'm drafting a quarterback right in the rounds. You know okay. what I'm saying? For one, and this has nothing to do with Purdy, but it does in a way because I'm, I'm keeping Purdy on his toes. But at the same time, get a guy, bro. Keep some fresh legs in here. You get what I'm saying? And if Brock Purdy falls on his face, then you got something else going. You get what I'm saying? And I don't know if Allen and Dobbs would be those two guys. You get me? Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. So I'm not, I'm not mad know, at it longer. because, because Alan, listen, I don't, I think Alan is just a placeholder in this league. So that's, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, uh, I, if they replaced him with anybody tomorrow, I wouldn't care. Period. And then the last but not least, how you feel about Jim and the Chargers? I think they go into the playoffs and they're going to make some noise because I love Jim. I believe in Jim like that. I think Jim and Herbert is going to be like a match in heaven like him and Alex Smith and him and Kaepernick. What you think? I think that him and Herbert are going to be magic, but I think that it's going to take a year. The AFC is loaded, man. Absolutely loaded. And they are trying to overcome that draft i mean uh excuse me that salary cap and clearing out space mm -hmm. that's going to be it, it could lead to a rough year however i say that but if they get neighbors or harrison and mm -hmm. they continue to beef up that offensive line it's like okay well maybe just maybe they can make some noise so uh, but i i love jim's philosophy of beefing up the offensive line that's his number one priority Love it. Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to ask that question because I was like, man, I've been thinking about Jim. I've seen, you know, the press comps and I said, you know what? Jim and Herbert, man, they going to ball out. I believe in Jim over there, man. But just that's all I got, Jesse, man. I just want to I really want to get on and holler at you, bro, because it's been a minute. You know, I'll be in the chat. I'll be following y'all, man. I just I, I, you know, I have to tap in with the homie. I didn't, it, 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 it didn't feel right with me sitting back. I had to call it. <laughs> no, I appreciate you, TC. Always good rapping with you, man. We'll talk soon. All right, bro. Peace. All right, Pitt. Okay. Uh, let's see. Black Belt Jones says, Jesse, let's hear your top 10 QBs. Mm, I need some parameters. Are we talking about from just this last season? Are we talking about who I'd want for the next five years? Are we talking about top 10 going into this next season? Like what, what's the parameters on that? Because these lists can go a million different directions. I'd be curious to see what your thoughts are. Okay. And we're going to go to John and then Hugo. Can you hear me? I got you, John. I got you. What's up, man? Hey, uh, I just wanted to ask, do you think free safety is a big need in the draft? Because if they see Huff and uh, um, Brown as um, strong safeties, then I feel like just relying on Gibb, who's really old, frankly, you know, and no depth there with Huff coming off of ACL, I feel like that might be a big need. Brother, I definitely agree with your assessment. In fact, the way that I would label it, is I would say it's one of their four biggest needs. You, To me, it's offensive line, it's corner, it's free safety, and it's tight end. Those are the four positions I would love to address in this draft. So 
I mean, yes, um, I who's that kid from Alabama we drafted last year? I mean, that as a third round pick between him and Moody. Uh, Are you talking about Latu? Latu. I mean, yeah, he needs to step it up, or else that's these third round picks can't be such big busts. I mean, getting Warner and and Kittle in the fifth round in the past has paid dividends, but you would think with third round picks they could at least be, you know, satisfactory backups. I mean, I know it's hit or miss, it's a crapshoot, but he really fell off. I mean, in training camp, y'all reported on it. I mean, he didn't do anything, frankly. Yeah, yeah, he he's he hasn't done a lot in the playoffs his whole career, though. That's not that's not new for. George Kittle, right? Like, I think a lot of people looked at him and was like, oh man, is he is he getting old kind of in front of our eyes all of a sudden? Because it the drop-off can happen quickly. It really can. But if you look at George Kittle's whole career, he really hasn't done a lot in the playoffs. He's had like a good game or two out of his, what, 12 playoff games, 13 plus, something like that. Is that he really hasn't Shanahan? done great. Is that him or Shanahan? Because, I mean, how many targets does he have in the uh, Super Bowl? Yeah, well, and that's what makes it interesting. I, I don't necessarily think that it is him, John. I, I really don't. But if you're going to pay a guy that kind of money for him mm-hmm. not to be a weapon in the playoffs, that's a weird thing to do. It's very odd. Also, cheaping out in the O line is a weird thing to do, you know, as well. I'm, I don't <laughs> know if there's any cap, you it's know, just... you know, uh, dynamics going on there. If they have some nerd in the background just saying, like, hey, we could save money here, but. I mean, we all see different things, and you know, it's 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 interesting. That's for sure. I mean, um, I think the last thing I wanted to touch on. Sorry for taking up too much time, but no, you're good, man. You got the, your five uh, minutes. The um, I was, I was wondering if Ayuk's extension wouldn't take place until, or I guess the the big money wouldn't hit till 2025. It's true. What's the what's the reservation between him and Debo? I could see them being like, hey, we can't pay two wide receivers over 50 mil and we barely target them. Um, but if there's, if the cap hit for Ayuk doesn't hit till 2025, I don't see why it would be so difficult and then just cut Debo after next year. Yeah. That, that decision doesn't have to be made this off season. And that's why I think, because one thing we have to consider is that whenever you extend a player, they get cheaper in that year. So Ayuk's going to be actually less expensive this year. If you extend him, you're going to save roughly $10 million by doing so. So yeah, absolutely. There's there's no reason you have to make that decision this offseason. That should be a decision you make next offseason. Now, the only way that I could see them saying, hey, it's just we have to make that decision right now is if BA's like, hey, I want to make 28 million, no less. That's my starting point. It's like something crazy. It's like, well, all right, well, we're kind of in the $25 million range. It's we're just not going to go there. That's the only reason. But Financially, they technically can make it work. Yes, they can. How much of Ayuk's kind of social media antics, for lack of a better term, would you would you say is kind of the agent saying, "Hey, put pressure on the Niners, pretend, quote unquote, like you know you're not happy and play hardball"? Or how much of it do you think is kind of something that might actually sour Shanahan or the locker room? I mean, obviously, him being in the doghouse previously, you know might make you think and not him not being part of the Cabo click might make you think that Shanahan might, I don't know, get up. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think that, um, I don't think that there's anything to that necessarily. I wouldn't, I mean, two short years ago, Debo requested a trade. <laughs> he was walking with open arms back in the locker room. I think players especially know that, Hey, this is this guy's chance to get his money. They understand it. Go get your money. It's nothing personal. And as long as you're on this team, you're a part of us. So I don't, I personally don't think there's anything to that. All right. Thanks for your time, man. Absolutely. Have a good one, man. Later. All right, Hugo, we're going to go to you in a second. Uh Uh-uh. Let's see. All right, got some chats here to get to real quick. Adam K says, I don't know about all my fellow 49er faithful, but I'm still not over the Super Bowl loss. It was gut-wrenching, and this was our best chance, in my opinion. I don't feel confident going forward. What do you think? 
Yeah, I mean, I think the 49ers are still going to be in contention. There's zero doubt about that in my mind. However, however, I think this was their best chance. So, I don't know. Uh, Black Belt Jones asked me my top 10 quarterbacks, and then he says, going into this season. Oh, my God. This is such a projection. I'll go quickly off the top of my head. Mahomes, Allen, Lamar, Burrow, Herbert, Stafford, Stroud, Rogers, Cousins, and then you can make an argument for Hertz, Goff, Love, Purdy, Lawrence, whatever direction you want to go. I don't know who number 10 is. That one's tough. That would be my 10. Daza says, while Brock Purdy has been really good, do we really want to pay him 50 to 60 million a year? Really, that's only about five to seven quarterbacks in the NFL worth that. I agree with you. That's where I'm at. It's only the elite of the elite that I would pay that. Like, like let's go to the top 10 list I just gave. Okay. The guy, the five guys I gave it at 10 that could be 10, and even cousins. <laughs> like, Putting Cousins in the top 10 when he's been borderline there his whole career, he's been back into the top 10, maybe top 12, depending on the season. Kirk Cousins has had a hell of a career. I stand up for Kirk Cousins all the time. But these borderline top 10 guys are not guys that you should pay big time money. They don't win rings. They don't, unless they're on the inexpensive contract. Dave says, I'm with Adam. Do we draft quarterback this year? I don't think so, man. I really don't. I, I don't think that they will. And I don't know that I would either. Maybe, maybe I would take a flyer on somebody just because Allen's like so mid, but I don't think they're going to. All right, we're going to go to Hugo. What's up, Hugo? Uh, what up, Jesse? How you doing? Doing good, man. How are you? First off, I want to give you a shout out, man. You're the fitted snapback king. First of Bro, all, you know I mean? flat bills and snapbacks. That's where it's at. That's it. That's it, baby. I hear you. You know what I mean? Uh, I go to you guys for my content. You, Grant, and Coach, man, y'all the best. You know what I mean? So I want to give Thank you our flowers. You know Thank what I mean? Um, my little segment, I just jumped in right now. I caught you live for the first time. I was like, oh, let me jump on here real quick. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's going to be real quick. My question is, what do you think of the whole Nick Wright thing saying that we need to do whatever it takes to get that first pick from Chicago and pick up Caleb? No, I don't. He said that about the 49ers? Yes, he said. He said that we have to let them go. You know, get that. Let Brock Purdy <laughs> trade Brock Purdy and, and pick up Caleb Williams. You know what I mean? Uh, I thought it was funny, but I figured I'll ask you that question. All right. First of all, it would take Brock and then some more to get it. There, right? but that's that's beside the point. Uh, I listen. Caleb Williams is uber talented. Okay, Ooh, he's got he checks all the boxes physically. I watch Caleb Williams, and I don't say I do not see can't miss talent. Now that doesn't mean he's he's not going to be great. I still have him as my number one quarterback in this class. I think this quarterback class is a little bit overrated. There's a lot of names, but I don't see that for sure can't miss prospect in this draft. I see a lot of really good players that could potentially get there. Caleb is certainly number one on that list, but I don't look at him and go, oh my gosh, this guy is for sure going to be that next elite player. CJ Stroud, I saw that. CJ Stroud, I saw it immediately. Watch one game of film. Saw it all over his film. I do not see that with Caleb Williams. That's me personally. No, I, I agree with you 100%. 100%. He's, he's talented, but we don't know his ceiling just yet. You know what I mean? He, he needs yeah. to develop a little bit more, and especially with all the drama that he's uh, going through right now. You know, I, I don't see him being a great fit for the Niners. So I, I think Nick Wright was wrong. I, I think I think this out of all the quarterbacks that I see in this year's draft, the guy actually that would probably at least right away play the best in the 49er system would be JJ McCarthy. 
because he lives over the middle of the field, absolutely lives there. That would be the guy that would be the best early on, I think, in this system. Now, I'm not saying he would be the best with another team or if I had the number one pick, I would take him. That's not what I'm saying. But with this team, this system, immediate impact, J.J. McCarthy, I think, would actually play the best year one in this system. Now, what about a quarterback for IU? I know that Brock Purdy, uh, that's his go-to guy, but mm -hmm. he he still doesn't have that uh, that arm 100%, you know, mm -hmm. throw them deep bombs. So uh, do you feel that if you was to get another quarterback to develop right next to Brock Purdy that might have them skills and the same uh, skill sets that Brock Purdy has, not right now, but, you know, eventually in the future, do you think that would mm -hmm. be a plus to, to pick up? Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you could have everything Brock Purdy has and then have an elite arm, that would be ideal. <laughs> um, I, I think, you know, I personally don't think you should ever stop looking at quarterback, right? I, I know that I just said, hey, I probably wouldn't draft one this year, but that's because I just, I don't, m maybe round seven. I could see like uh, taking a Slovis or something who was projected at one point to be one of the best quarterbacks, fell off, had to transfer schools. Maybe you take your chances on something like that and just see what he turns into. Definitely, yes. Bring in some guys. It's never going to hurt anything. But ultimately, Brock Purdy is going to get signed to a long-term extension. And the only way that any of these guys are going to ever play is if he gets hurt. So, but, but, if that if that happens and he does get hurt, you sure would like to have maybe develop somebody behind him that you could trust. That would be great. No, definitely would. Now I got two last questions. Uh, yeah, go ahead, man. Shoot the the BA contract. You know, I know that uh, you know they could franchise tag him and keep him going for the long run. You know, what, what the next two three years? I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. um, is that going to be possible? And then. On top of that, address the O line. You know, are they gonna do something in the draft to beef up the O line? Because right now, I'm not too happy with what they've done so far. The so the first question was trading IU. Is that what you said? No, not trading IU. Is he gonna be? Do you think he's gonna be extended? Or yeah, they're gonna I do. Uh, try to try to go that the long route and just franchise tag him. Yeah, you're saying go fifth year option and then franchise tag him. No, I, I think he does it. I think he's either extended or traded. So if they make it through round round one in the draft, and I assume they will, he'll get his long term extension. I, I definitely see that happening. So I think he's going to be here for the long haul. And then as far as offensive line, they're definitely going to draft an offensive lineman. The question is, is where because there's some impact guys in round one and two. After two rounds, you're really taking flyers on on guys and hoping that they pan out. So, you know, the I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do in those rounds. I, I really couldn't tell you. It depends on what players fall and, and what have you. But the consensus says this is one of the best offensive line drafts that we've seen in a long time. It would be a shame if the 49ers didn't take an offensive lineman in round one or two. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I'm thinking they're going defense first round, but... God, maybe, maybe, but listen, listen, I will say this. If, if things fall crazy where a lot of the really good tackles are gone, the best centers off the board, what have you, and they went with Newbin, I wouldn't be mad at that. I, I think he's got a chance to be a really good safety in this league. And I think he would bring something that this team needs, which is more of a rangy safety. So I wouldn't be mad at it. No, uh, last question, right? So what yes, do you sir. think about Trey Lance to, uh, being in Dallas? You think uh, <laughs> <Dude. laughs> they're going to do something with, with Dak and have him start or whatever? <laughs> they need to do something over there because they keep on losing to us. Yeah, bro. I don't know. I really haven't put a lot of thought into Trey Lance since he was traded. I know that he gets brought up seemingly every stream that, that we do. But once he was, if you're not playing and you, like if you're not on the 49ers, and you're not making noise somewhere else, like I'm really not putting a lot of thought into you, but it is interesting what they're doing over there. I, I would say let's, let's separate the Lance thing from the Dak thing and just look at Dak. I don't know if, if they're playing coy and they're eventually going to rework that deal or what, 
But I, I think it's ballsy. And a lot of people are like, oh, my God, how can you not rework that deal with Dak? Or how can you not have this guy long term? Like, look at his numbers. He's one of those guys that I was just talking about where he's borderline top 10 year in and year out. Those guys, when they're paid big money, do not win rings. They don't. And the next time it happens will be the first time that it happens. So if they don't pay him, I actually think it's smart as hell. Franchise tag him next year, trade him, go try to get another guy. That's what I would do if I was Dallas. Yeah, it, it's just crazy how they haven't really did anything in free agency. And it, it, they just expect to be the, a better team when they haven't done anything. And, you know, not to make it a Dallas situation. You know what I mean? But No, no, just, no. It, no, it, but but here's the thing is a lot of people think, think that they're bluffing because, oh, you know, they're just trying to figure out the contract. Listen, if if they extended Dak Prescott immediately, they would have had so much money to play with in free agency and been players. The fact that they chose not to do that, I'm not saying for sure, but it really does seem like they're going to let this contract expire and let him walk next year. Because if you weren't going to do that, why wouldn't you work on the contract, get it done before free agency? That way you could free up $30, $40 million to play with in free agency and go out and try to win. I think they're looking at it and saying, we're not going to win with this guy. There's no point. We're, let's just let him, let him finish his contract out. We'll sign our Parsons. We'll sign our CD Lamb. And we'll figure out the quarterback later. But Dak is not it. Mm. And I think it's, I, I, again, it looks ballsy on the surface, but I love it. What do you think is going to be the biggest threat to the Niners next year? You know, with uh, Green Bay, the Lions, you know, Detroit. coming up. It's Detroit. Detroit. It's Detroit, man. They they kept their coaching staff. They uh, improved a ton on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, a ton on the defensive side of the ball. They've drafted well each of the last three drafts. It's going to be Detroit. They're they're coming really quick. I'm I'm curious to see what they do this year. Mm. Yeah. I figured the same way too, but I appreciate the conversation, my guy. You know, what I mean, Absolutely, I, jumped on, I jumped on late, so I really didn't see the chat. I put, a, I probably would have had more questions, but I <laughs> no, appreciate it. It's all you. good, man. It's my first time coming on here. You know, what I mean, I love the show. You know, what I mean, congratulations to you, man. Thank keep you. Them, keep them caps coming, bro. Absolutely, brother. Thank you, Hugo. You have a good night. Call in anytime, yeah. man. That was great. Thank you. Definitely. All right. Take care. All right. God bless, man. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> Wait, is that? I thought I saw that out of the corner of my eye. Is your name? Are you <laughs> Cognac Familia? That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, Motor says, as for Jesse's valid point earlier of how Brock can improve, he has to improve when teams with the talent to execute play man. This should be his focus. Yeah, and and I think the accuracy thing really plays into it. I I think plus just playing football, his timing will get better. I, one of the things that he does great is he reads the field pre-snap, he makes quick decisions. I think he can actually make quicker, better decisions. Like I don't think he's at the peak of his powers with even the things he's really good at and and in areas where he's one of the better guys in the league at quite frankly, I actually think he can bring even those things that are strengths. He can make those even bigger strengths. I really do. I, I the, He's not at his ceiling yet. Now, I'm not saying that there's going to be this exponential growth where, you know, Brock Purdy is going to go from, you know, whatever you rate him at to, boom, he's going to jump five, six, seven spots in the rankings because of these things. But I think he can improve enough or a, a lot in where he's at now to where with this team still being really talented, he can close the gap and go win a Super Bowl. I, listen, I loved what Brock Purdy did and showed in crunch time in the playoffs. I absolutely love that. But let's we we have to be honest. We haven't seen that complete performance from him other than the Seattle game and Seattle and actually not even then that game that playoff game wasn't either we we haven't seen a complete performance from him in the playoffs yet we haven't so that's something that we'll be looking for next year as well he's had some good moments 
He statistically, he crushed it against Seattle. But beginning to end, we haven't seen him put it together in any playoff game yet. But that's exciting. That should be exciting for 49er fans because like, damn, like I was really impressed with Brock Purdy in the playoffs. But he hasn't even put together a full game together yet. So imagine how much better it can get. That's kind of what I'm I'm looking for. So, yeah, I, I just think that there is some improvements there. And I think we're going to see some of that improvement this offseason. I really do. I, I think that, I think it could be shocking to some people how much better he can look in certain scenarios. I do. But, but no, it's it's that's not what I'm saying. That's that's not it. Listen, again, if I, I love that 187 keeps putting this because I think it's so pertinent. I'll tell you this, Doctor Doctor Robert. I when I go watch quarterbacks that are coming out of the draft, I don't look at the statistics of those games. I don't look at who won those games. I go and I watch the film and just make my assessment on a quarterback. Okay. Now, sometimes I know just from hap by happenstance, like, oh, this was the national championship game or this was a conference championship game. So I know who won that game. But for the most part, I don't know the statistics of the players. I don't know who won the games and I'm watching the film for what it is. I will tell you that there are times afterwards that I'll go pull up that game and the stats and I'm like, really? He only completed 54% of his passes and threw for 209 yards and one touchdown? Like, yeah, on the surface, that's not a good game. But when I watched the game throw for throw, I was, I'm so impressed with that player. Throw in and throw out. And then there are times... And I think the Seattle game is that for Brock Purdy where I'll watch a game and be like, bro, I had no idea that Buddy just went for 400 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, I saw the touchdowns. I get the three touchdowns. But the 400 yard, I didn't see that. Like, I don't think that was a very good game. I had a lot of flaws watching him. Sometimes games happen and stats pile up, but you look at it and go, God, dude, I... Where? When? What the heck? That's not the game I watched. So the point is, is he hasn't put together a complete game. I'm not saying statistically it wasn't awesome, but that Seattle game, which was his first game, statistically was his best game. And since then, it's been a little bit of a whatever. But but I will say this. If you watch the film of the Lions game, Statistically, it doesn't hold a candle to what happened in that Seattle game. But I like the film a hell of a lot better in that Lions game than I did that Seattle game, right? So that's the way that I look at it. I I don't know. Stats are, are awesome. And they certainly, for me, stats support my opinion. I will use them to support an opinion that I have on a player. If I think a player is really good at X and then I can go find a stat that supports that, I, I'll use that stat like crazy. If I think a quarterback is bad at X and I can find a stat to support that, I'll use that stat like crazy. But I hate the raw, just, hey, we're looking stat for stat because that doesn't tell you the whole story. There's so much context that is lost when you just look at the statistics. It's why if you watched me during the season, I didn't kill Brock when he had these weird moments pop up throughout the season in the crunch time against the Ravens. Like there's so much context that's lost yet. It was almost weird because sometimes he would have a quote unquote good game statistically. And I was harsher on him after those games than I was even the Ravens game. You know what I mean? Because I'm going off of everything all encompassing. What did I see? What did the game show me? Then what did the stats show me? So forth and so on. So that's how I look at the position. I don't know. Just a little bit different, I guess. 
Yeah, absolutely. As long as they don't continue to be weird moments, right? Like that's the big thing. That's that's what you're looking for. They can't continue to be weird moments. But unfortunately, is is they kind of were there for a minute. He got stuck in some of those weird moments. Now the hope is is that when it happens this next year, assuming that players go down and they're playing a tough team or it gets rainy or what have you, that he can work through those moments. That's what we're looking for. That's when we see the growth. There's nothing wrong with having those weird moments because you're right. That's what gives you a chance to have that career arc and improve and learn and all those things. You but you have to see the improvement before you stop calling them weird moments. Uh, Dr. Robert says, yes, I am looking for change, uh, for changing plays, changing protections, finding the mismatch, et cetera. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's, that's another area that he's probably going to improve on. You know, what are the mismatches? Who can I attack? There's just so many little things that, that playing, playing the game in repetition, he'll just improve on so many finite little things. So. Yeah, he does for the most part. Uh, Brock was an MVP candidate and people will still say uh, that he sucks, just like Lamar Jackson. Uh, yeah, but see, that's the other... Listen, outside of this fan base, you're going to hear a lot of trash talk. But genuinely, who in this fan base is saying that Brock Purdy sucks? Like, you've heard me say, I don't think he's elite. Okay. But where in that am I saying that Brock Purdy sucks? I, I don't know that it happens very often. He doesn't suck. Certainly not. He doesn't suck. So I don't know. I feel like that's a straw man argument, personally. No, he doesn't. He, but he, he, he really genuinely doesn't. People get so emotional with Nick Wright or anybody that doesn't just like bend the knee and praise Brock Purdy, right? Like I hear it all the time. You're a hate. I get tagged. I'm not even a part of conversations and I get tagged. It's like, oh, the hater, the guy that thinks Brock Purdy sucks at JNA underscore LSS. He'll love this take from this Seattle Seahawk fan. I'm like, yeah, I don't agree with that take. I don't, I don't, what are you talking about? Like, I never said that. He never said that he sucked. I've never once heard him say Brock Purdy sucks ever. I've never heard that from his mouth. Now he's not as high on him as you probably want him to be, but I don't think he's ever said he sucks. Has he? Can you find me that clip and I'll change my mind. Find me that clip and I'll change my mind. But I, I don't think that he's ever said that. I think a lot of people listen to what he says and interpret it as that. But the words Brock Purdy sucks, I don't think when I watched him this season once came out of his mouth. And I'm pretty confident in that. Oh my gosh, dude. Where have you been, Swan Song? I haven't seen you in forever, brother. Wow. Good to see you in the chat, man. Good to see you. Swan Song says if Brock gets a 45 to $50 million per year, the window for some of the older veterans is closed. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I think that um, uh, the windows, it, the window is closing for this group, regardless of what Brock gets paid. It just is. They're they're older. That's what's happening. So, no, the window's closing, anyways. I mean, he implies is a lot of that is an emotional thought of what you think you're hearing. So I don't know. I bet you I can find a minimum of 10 clips where he said that he's better than than Jimmy Garoppolo. KB says, Jesse, by saying you should trade a quarterback, he is saying he sucks. No, he's not. No, he's not. That doesn't mean he sucks. That just means he doesn't think he's the franchise guy. I mean, I, I just put... I just put Kirk Cousins firmly in my top 10 for this upcoming year. And I wouldn't pay Kirk Cousins. I wouldn't give him big time money. Do, is that me saying Kirk Cousins sucks? Right? Like you've heard me 
multiple times stand up for Brock Purdy, or excuse me, Kirk Cousins on this very show over the years. I put him firmly in my top 10. I wouldn't pay him if he was on the 49ers, even if he was 30 years old and not coming off of an injury because I don't think he's a franchise guy. It doesn't mean he sucks. It doesn't mean I think he sucks. I just wouldn't pay him. So, all right, I'm going to go to uh, Big Rick and then Drippy Dad. Pay him if he was on the 49ers. What's up, Big Rick? Even if he was 30 years old. Hey, how you doing? Doing good, man. How are you? Hey, how you doing, Jess? Hey, I'm good, all right. Man, good. Hey, man. I, I, hey, hey. I can just you, had a, real quick, uh, real quick, real quick. Big Rick, I'm going to mute you. Can you, whatever, I think I can hear myself. I don't know if you've got like the YouTube thing going on in the background, but I hear a mad echo. There you go. There we go. Perfect. Is it good okay, now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I hate all my right. own voice. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, hey uh i i just had something to say about like the brock purdy hate and all of that it's yeah I, I, it's not really hate it's not really hate i just feel like a lot of us have seen great quarterbacks play throughout the years and it comes mm -hmm. times to where when you get to those playoffs you're going to need a, a quarterback that can beat the defense you mm -hmm. can beat a corner not just not just uh going in and, and, and play with cal shanahan's offense Sometimes you're going to have to beat that defense deep. Everybody is dropping in, and and Cal, uh, Cal is 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 throwing a lot of those 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 uh how can you uh, uh swing passes and things of that mm -hmm. nature. When he'll stick with it when we really need to throw the ball downfield. And I, I just feel like like we just need that quarterback that can beat the defense when Shao Canahan's offense is not going to work. That's just yeah. all I, had to, I. I just feel like it's not. It's not a lot of hate. I just feel like in this defense today, you you need a stronger arm to beat those great defenses. Yeah, I well, I'll say if this. Let, let's, make, I'm, let's make it. Let's make it really simple, uh, Rick. Let's make this really simple. <clears throat> and this is how few okay. of these guys there are in this league. Okay, this is how few. <clears throat> yeah. CMC. We all we all agree. I think. Raise your hand in the chat. Put up the hand emoji if we all agree that right now CMC is the best running back in the league. All right. I think we could, that's probably something that 49er fans can agree on. Okay. We all agree on that. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Great player, best running back in the league. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Now, the fact I, I get that every, everybody got caught up in all the great things that. Spag said about Brock Purdy in his interviews and all the other things. But one thing that the players yeah. said in Kansas City was their game plan was to put it on Brock Purdy's right arm, right? Now, yeah, a lot of exactly. people are like, hey, well, I mean, it's CMC, of course. Okay. If CMC was with Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson or all those other things, do you think that the game plan would be, hey, we're going to try to make those quarterbacks beat us, and we're going to stop seeing kind of break it up. Am I breaking up to you guys in the chat or no? I don't think so. Can you hear me? It might just be my connection. It might be. Yeah, I can connection. hear you. Okay, okay. The, the point is, is that if CMC was paired with the elite guys, no, none of those defensive coordinators, those opposing defensive coordinators are saying, oh, let's go stop CMC and make these great quarterbacks beat us. That's not going to happen. Those are the guys that you need. If you want, yeah. if you're going to pay a guy, those are the only guys you pay. So take CMC and put them with any quarterback you want in the league. And if you say, I would rather game plan to stop CMC than that quarterback, then you probably shouldn't pay that quarterback big time money. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. Exactly. So, and there's not many. There's I get it. There's not many of those guys. But just because there's not many, it doesn't no, mean that not. you just pay that you pay the next guy because there's nobody else better. That's a quick way to not win when you're stuck in a long term contract with a guy that's not that guy. You're not going to win a Super Bowl. You're just not. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's right on the money right there, man. And and like like I like this guy, man. I watched him in college, man. And and I and I think I spoke on one. I think it was uh, you and Coach. And uh, mm -hmm. I chimed in, and and uh, what I was saying was he he does well with with uh, with dual tight end sets. Mm -hmm. He does good. Yeah, with, yeah, I remember he, that. Yeah. If, if you go back, oh, go ahead. No, no, I re I remember that comment go from ahead. you multiple times. Yeah, I heard, I remember that comment from you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he he he's completely accurate in a in a in a short distance, but he needs those those tight ends that's gonna gonna help him out. We we already have Kittle, and if we just got like a Theo a Theo Johnson or something like that, man, he would go crazy. And this is one more thing I, I wanted to say too, uh, Malik Washington. I, I just feel like Malik could be that that West Welker for him in that short distance. You know, you know that short space where he can quick yeah. and, and plan the uh, the the uh, the uh, 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 slot role that would help him out and and another tight end man. And this offense can go go high, man. Yeah, and, I, and that's I with a weak arm. I, I feel like we can win it like that. I I think a young quarterback's best friend is always the tight end. I I do, and if you yeah. can have two really good ones, that's even better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was one more thing I had, but uh, I can't think of it right now, man. But uh, okay. I'm just glad I was able to call in on your call show, man. I've been loving it. Last week, man, just had me busting up, cracking up, man. And it was a good show, man. I just I, I love this this call in show, man. Just keep it going. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the support. I appreciate you, man. And call in anytime. All right, all the time, bro. Later. Nah, that was good. That was good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's that simple. I guess that's the best way that I can put it is is the CMC point. Because I, I can tell you what I think an elite quarterback is. And when I try to explain it, I feel like it never truly hits home. And everybody has their different thoughts on what an elite quarterback is. I, I think that's probably the simplest way that I can lay it out. Put CMC with that quarterback and which... Which player is the defense going to game plan for? Are they going to game plan for the quarterback or are they going to game plan for CMC? That's your elite quarterbacks. If they game plan for CMC, quarterback's not elite. If they game plan for the quarterback, there's your elite quarterback. All right, let's go to uh, Drippy. What's up, Drippy? Yeah. Uh, you're cut hold on you're cutting in and out like i'm getting like every other word from you okay let me better that's better whatever you just did oh he's been having trouble man he's been in and out of the studio so hopefully i can get him to work hopefully i can get him to work uh You can rally nice. Purdy's a stud. You MFers are asleep. Or are you asleep or what? If it's not Brock, why hasn't Shanahan had the same level of success with other quarterbacks? We're, what? What? Were you... Did, did tw well, Hold on a second. Did 2019 not happen? Did the 49ers not go to a Super Bowl in 2019 and lose to the Kansas City Chiefs? Yes or no? They did, right? Or am I am I tripping? Do I maybe I I'm misremembering the 2019 season. 2019 season. No, no, no. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. He didn't say he said QB success. No, no, let's read it again. Purdy is a stud. UMF's asleep or what? If it's not Brock, why hasn't Shanahan had the same level of success with his other quarterbacks? Not why haven't other quarterbacks played as well in this system. He's literally saying Shanahan. And how do you gauge head coaches? Now, unlike quarterbacks, right? Quarterbacks, I don't think wins are a quarterback stat. They absolutely are a coach stat. How else do you gauge a coach? Like they don't play, they don't have statistics, they don't 
put plays on film, you gauge them off of wins and losses, right? I Listen, I get you, Daniel. I'm not saying they're the same level quarterback, but the question was, why has Shanahan not had the same level of success? Shanahan has had the same level of success. He's made it to an NFC championship and a Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo. So I, I... that's not now. Maybe he meant something different with that question, but that's not how it read. Daza says, "Why spend that much money on Brock Purdy when there's supposedly similar quarterbacks to Brock Purdy in this draft? Surely we can draft another Brock Purdy." I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying that. I don't. I don't know that they can just draft another Brock Purdy. Like, it's not easy to find good quarterback play. Like, good. There's not a lot of gr- good quarterbacks in the league. There's just not. I mean, there's maybe 15 guys that you feel confident rolling out week in and week out. And right now, right now, Brock Purdy's one of those guys. Okay? So that that's a good thing. You love that. But being one of those guys that you're confident in rolling out Sunday after Sunday that can put you in a position to win is very different than being a guy that is the reason you win every single week or most weeks. That is the reason you're going to get over the hump, even when you're paid a lot of money. Those are very, very different descriptions. Dave says, because Shanahan sucks, draft quarterbacks every year. Come on. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I don't mind taking quarterbacks late every year, for sure. For sure. I know, dude, he, listen, this is an after dark show for sure, but Grant was traveling back from Orlando, so we couldn't get it done tonight. So I'm going to make it up right here. Just did hour and 40 minutes. Uh, T-Dub says he's more than that. How many quarterbacks were MVP finalists? Dude, I don't give a rip about that. If, if your, if your point is, that because he was in an MVP conversation, that he's better. Th- you, so, okay, okay, okay. Based off of that, the two best quarterbacks in the league right now are Lamar Jackson and Brock Purdy. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Over Patrick Mahomes? You you take those guys over Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and Burrow and them? Okay. Because that's what you're saying. And and by the way, guess who else? Let, let's take all the best. Let's take all the guys that were in that conversation this year. We're gonna take. We're gonna rate our top four quarterbacks based off the MVP award. You ready for this? Here's your f- best four quarterbacks in the league, based off of your criteria. Criteria. T Dub, you ready? Lamar Jackson one. Brock Purdy, Dak Prescott. Tua Tunga Vailoa. Those are your four best quarterbacks in the league. Because MVP, right? Come on, man. Stop. Dave Barclay says, Jesse killing it solo. Love the chat. Fire Kyle. <laughs> oh, dude, I just fire Kyle. Okay. Then I will say respectfully. Your evaluation of quarterbacks is terrible. Respectfully, though. Respectfully. Respectfully. Because I love you, and I love what you contribute to the chat. But any list that has Tua and Dak anywhere near the top five needs to be punted into the furthest garbage can in the world. So, absolutely not. I would take, dude, I, I mean, so many quarterbacks. Let, let's name all, let's go to the quarterbacks that I would take over to a, like I just did a, a top 10 list for guys going into this next year. I had nine guys is my top nine. And then five guys that I would take as number 10. You, you can make the argument for any one of them. Purdy was one of them. One of those guys was not Tua. 
that's how much I think of Tua. I think Tua is absolutely buns, but he's the fourth best quarterback. And stats say he led the league in passing, I think. So he's elite. Two is elite. Statistically, MVPs, two is elite. I mean, if that's how we're judging quarterbacks around here, then I guess he's elite. I don't know what to say. No, they weren't. <laughs> no. No. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. No. There's more to the game than statistics. 187. I need it. I need it from you one more time. What's your favorite thing to say over the last couple of days? We must do it. I'm I'm relying on you. You know what to say right now. What should we do instead of looking at the, at the statistics? Come on, 187. I need... Film doesn't lie. There it is. There we go. All right. Perfect. That was a great way. Great way to end it. All right. Listen, much love, all of you. T-Dub, I hope you know I'm just busting your balls, man. It's all in good fun. But Tua sucks. <laughs> Other than that, I appreciate y'all. I'll be back tomorrow on Vish's channel. Myself, Vish, and Larry. We'll see you then. Peace.